Hello everyone. Um, ugh, I know I look a mess and I'm not being dressed properly, but I will explain all of that in just a minute and why this video is so light. We have a sick toddler in the house and no, 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 it's not Corona or anything like that. Um, last week he did go to the doctor and he was diagnosed with strep. We came home and started a regimen of antibiotics. He started getting well. Now we have him quarantined, but we still have to go about our everyday lives. My, my husband still has to work. Um, I stay at home, but my husband still has to go out out there in it and um, until we're told otherwise there's really nothing we can do about that situation it's just the way it is um, tonight his uh, situation took a turn for the worse that would be the toddlers his fever was spiking he had a large amount of mucus he was coughing the vomiting has started I was worried and I, I know I suffer from an anxiety disorder and that might have attributed to it but the fact that I felt like the situation was out of my hands we have been fighting a fever for a while now but when it got to where it just didn't want to break at all and then he began to vomit and then we couldn't control the situation anymore I became worried so we covered him up, put him in the vehicle, we didn't speak to anybody, we didn't in contact with anybody. It was late, nobody was even out, and we headed straight to the emergency room. And I went in first, and I told him the situation. We left him in the vehicle so that I didn't know what it was going to be like. I didn't know if there was going to be a whole bunch of people there or anybody there. And the situation was that it was empty, but I didn't want to take any any unnecessary risks. The doctors and nurses were very kind. They were very understanding. They are very cooperative. They helped us immensely. They had me to bring him in, covered, took him straight back. Then we uncovered him in the back and started getting his vitals. And they set us straight up with a room. It had a door. It wasn't a curtain room. It was a room room with a door. And they kept him in there. And each time they came in, they sh opened the door and shut the door behind them. They never left the door open. They drew blood, took swabs, did tests. And it came back that it was just another infection. And most times I'd be like, oh my God, another infection? This time I was just like, oh, thank God, it's just an infection. We can cure this with an antibiotic. It's not the end of the world. And he's like, well, the doctor was like, well, he's already on an antibiotic, so I'm going to give him an injection so that he can't puke this up. So it'll go straight to the bloodstream and it'll attack the infection. And this will help him feel so much better so much quicker to which I said sure whatever you think whatever you think is best I've been taking my child well all my children to this emergency room I don't know for years since my middle child was five she's ten so years yeah we've trusted in this hospital for many years I've been there myself with infections and different things. So they've gotten to know us over the years. They've got to think of us as regulars. That sounds so bad for it being a hospital. But you've got to understand something. I have three children and my middle child, she is prone to ear infections. And my youngest child is prone to upper respiratory infections. And my oldest child 
he's not prone to anything, but he's, he's human and he gets sick just like anybody else. He's caught the flu a couple times in his life and he's had some upper rep respiratory infections in his life too. He's 13, so of course he's human. He hasn't gotten as sick as his sister or his younger brother, but he has gotten sick in his life. I mean, I mean myself, after I had my youngest, I found myself there because I got sick. From what? I don't know. It's, I don't know. Maybe it was from the surgery. Maybe it was just, I picked up a bug. I don't know. I can't say. So, you know, I'm just grateful for the services that they provided, not only in the past, but tonight as well. As I said, they didn't um, judge or condemn because we were out. They just were very helpful because they could probably tell this mama was scared. So they were just very helpful. And I wish I could say more about the situation, but I'm not going to name like where we're at or any names or states or anything like that. I'm just going to say that we were just grateful to be able to go to the hospital and that they were able to assist with my son. So, you know, he's, well, we're at home. We're all at home. We're all at home now and resting and he's resting. You might hear him a little bit in the background. He's playing with his toys and um, I've got the humidifier going and he's due to take another round of medicine in about 30 more minutes. So I'm gonna be doing that here in a little while. And we're just grateful to all of the medical staff who are still out there working and the grocers and the food workers and the law enforcement and everybody who's putting their efforts into, you know, making sure that everybody has what they need. I'm sorry if I seem a little, I don't know, I seem a little off. I'm just, at this point, I'm very tired. I am extremely tired. And, you know, it's times like these that I was glad that my husband was there to transport us to the hospital because I don't think I would I don't think I was the best person to get out on the roads. And if I feel compromised at all, I won't do it. But, you know, I have my husband, so he was more than willing to drive us, of course, I mean, that's his child. He was more than willing to drive us to the emergency room. Um, as for all of you out there, if you're struggling with sickness and not necessarily the coronavirus. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I understand that is very serious. And if you're struggling with that, struggling with that, ugh, try to fix my speech here. If you're struggling with that, then my heart goes out to you. It really does because that's got to be scary. I, I can't imagine. Um, but if you're also dealing with other sicknesses right now, such as bronchitis, strep, just respiratory respir respiratory problems, upper respiratory problems, then my heart really goes out to you because it's got to be rough with everything that's going on. Plus, you're trying to deal with sickness, especially if you're dealing with sickness in young ones or the elderly. And that's really something that, you know, my heart goes out to because that's got to be hard. I mean, it's bad when you're sick. It's a hundred times worse when your child's sick or your mother or father's sick. I mean, that's just, geez, I don't know, that's, that's really tough. So my message for tonight on this really late night is just stay calm, take care of yourselves and your family, um, be careful, and know that you're not alone. It might feel like right now that you're alone, but you're not alone. We're all in this together, and you know my love and support goes to you, and I hope that when we come out of this on the other side, we're stronger for it. So I'm just going to end on that note and say that I love you guys. And sorry that this video was so 
felt like it was so like all over the place and kind of unorganized. I'm just extremely tired right now. But I do love you and I will see you all soon. Bye.